Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghu here. In this class, we will discuss about axioms of probability. In our previous classes, we already discussed about the basics to understand these axioms. So, we will go a little bit fast in explanation of axioms of probability. It is very, very simple to understand if you have the previous classes in tuition. So, our assumption is you already have that intuition. Please watch our previous classes and come back here. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. Coming to today's class, axioms of probability, axiom 1. So, for any event A, probability of A is always greater than or equal to 0. In our previous classes, we clearly discussed that probability value always lies between 0 and 1. So, let's try to again understand with an example, event which is unlikely to happen. The probability of that event will be almost near to 0. Unlikely to happen means very rare to happen. So, let's take this example. Event E is randomly select a card. So, from the deck of cards, 5 of spade out of 52 cards. Picking a 5 of spade from that 52 cards is we are having only one possibility. It is very unlikely, unlikely to happen. So, the probability value is 1 by 52 that is almost almost near to 0. So, if you take if you take an event, it is very likely to happen. Then the probability value is almost near to 1. So, let us take an example. E is randomly pick spade or red color card. Randomly, if you pick a card, that card should be spade or it is a red color card. So, how many spade cards are there? 13 cards. How many red color cards are there? 26 cards are there. 26 plus 13, 39 by 52. It is very likely to happen if you randomly pick a card. It may be spade, it may be red color card. Very likely to happen that event. It is almost near to one value. So, it, the probability value is always between 0 and 1. Now, coming to the next axiom, probability of sample space is equal to 1. So, what, what we discussed about sample space in our toss two coins, sample space is head, 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 tail, tail, head, tail, tail. So, if you, if you toss two coins, any one of the event is going to happen from the sample space. So, the probability of sample space is 1, means 100% it is going to happen something from these events, some of these uh, elements. So, the probability of happening of sample space is 1, means 100% it is going to happen something from these elements, from the sample space. Now, coming to the axiom 3, if A1, A2, so on, AN are disjoint events, disjoint events means mutually exclusive events, we, we discussed about set uh, with uh, graphical examples of sets in our uh, previous class about uh, exclusive events, mutually exclusive events. Uh, so, disjoint events, uh, then probability of A1 union A2 union A3 so on AN is given as probability of A1 plus A2, probability of A2 plus probability of AN. So, A1 union A2 means A1 or A2 or A3 that is what it is going to happen probability of A1 plus A2 plus so on. We will understand with an example. This equation we already discussed in our previous class so, but again it is an axiom that is why we are going to discuss it again. Toss two coins head 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 tail tail head tail tail this is the sample space probability of E1 or E1 or E2. E1 is head head E2 is head tail. What's the meaning of this? Probability of E1 union E2 means E1 or E2. This is given with the equation probability of E1 plus E2, 1 by 4 plus 1 by 4 that is equal to 1 by 2. So, without, the, without this equation, how we find the probability? E1 or E2 means head head or head tail. Event E is head head or head tail. 2 out of 4 which is equal to 1 by 2, we got the same output. So, that is why if they are disjoint sets, this is the point you have to understand. If they are not disjoint sets, our probability will change. Not disjoint events, additional law of probability. We call this as additional law of, uh, addition law of probability. Probability of E1 union E2 is equal to probability of E1 plus probability of E2 minus probability of E1 intersection E2. So, wh why we have written this equation? Try to understand with an example. When you roll a dice, even is the event dice show up even number. Means what's the chances? 2, 4, 6. E2 is an event dice show up value greater than 3. That is 4, 5, 6. 
सो व्हाट्स द कॉमन एलिमेंट्स इन दिस टू इवेंट्स फोर सिक्स आर द कॉमन एलिमेंट्स सो इफ यू वांट टू आइडेंटिफाई प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ई वन यूनियन ई टू इधर ई वन और ई टू दैट इज व्हाट द मीनिंग ऑफ ई वन यूनियन ई टू सो प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ ई वन इज थ्री बाई सिक्स टू फोर सिक्स थ्री बाई सिक्स प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ई टू इज थ्री बाई सिक्स फोर फाइव सिक्स प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ई वन इंटरसेक्शन ई टू इज फोर फाइव फोर एंड सिक्स आर कॉमन इन दिस टू सेट्स दैट इज टू बाई सिक्स इज द प्रॉबिलिटी so 3 by 6 plus 3 by 6 minus 2 by 6 which is equal to 4 by 6 so why we have subtracted 2 by 6 from this uh, uh, probability of uh, e1 plus e2 see here 3 by 6 means we involved 4 comma 6 in this probability 3 by 6 means we involved 4 comma 6 in this probability means 4 and 6 are involved two times if 4 is occurred any event is happening because it is the intersection value E1, E2, both are occurring. We involved four comma six two times here and here. That's why we have to reduce two by six. Four, six. We involved four here and here. We involved six here and here. That's why two elements are involved two times. That's why two elements should be removed one time. That's why two by six. That is what. Uh, that's why we subtracted. Uh, E1 intersection E2, and one more uh, similar equation we have to understand. Similarly, E1 union E2 union E3 is given as probability of E1 plus probability of E2, probability of E3 minus probability of E1 intersection E2 minus probability of E1 intersection E3 minus probability of E2 intersection E3 plus probability of E1 intersection E2 intersection E3. So why we are adding this at the last? that also you have to understand with an example the same when we roll a dice first event is 1 2 5 second event is 2 5 6 third event is 5 6 3 3 common element in all the events are 5 means a intersection b intersection c is 5 a and b common elements in both a and b are 2 comma 5 common elements in b and c are 5 comma 6 common elements in a and, a and c are 5 so why we added this equation this formula at the end the let's try to understand probability of a is 3 by 6 means 2 5 are involved there 5 is involved here probability of b is 3 by 6 means 5 is involved here probability of c is 3 by 6 means 5 is involved here means 5 is involved here 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 probability of a intersection b 5 is involved here means we are subtracting one time probability of a intersection c 1 by 6 5 is involved here because ac common element is 5 means we are subtracting 5 one time here probability of b intersection c 2 by 6 means 5 is involved here we are subtracting 5 again 3 times 5 is added 3 times 5 is subtracted means we are not at all involving 5 that's why we have to add probability of a intersection b intersection c which is 5 1 by 6 should be added to that this is how the equation is now coming to the next law complement law we already discussed about complement events in our last class probability of e dash means complement is given as e dash is equal to 1 minus probability of event e so probability of e plus probability of e dash is equal to 1 we already discussed what's complement means let's take an example head 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 tail tail head tail tail this is what our sample space is e is equal to head head means e complement means uh, other than head head remaining all elements comes to e dash probability of e or e dash disjoint sets probability of e or e dash is given as probability of e plus e dash which is known as probability of sample space which is equal to 1 either this or that happen means uh, entire sample space is involved in our probability that is equal to 1 this is this can be written as uh, probability of e dash is equal to 1 minus probability of e so that's why probability of e complement is equal to 1 minus probability of e hope you understand this concept if you have any questions regarding the concept please post your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates thank you